Hi, this is Mathieu Frémo, aka Fremox. I'm a motion designer from France. This video is a quick overview of my very first toolset for After Effects, called E3D MoGrafter FX. Before starting to dive into its parameters, uh, let me show you how to properly install the toolset inside After Effects, since it's a bit different from what you are used to. So, you just have downloaded this zip file. Just double click on it on the Mac and it will uncompress it. In the folder, you will find two elements. One is the script itself in GSX. The second one is a folder called E3D Mografter FX. It contains a few FFX presets. Just take both of them with the shift key and copy both of them here. Just go inside your application um, folder, find your Adobe After Effects uh, current version. Here I will take the CS6 version for the purpose of the tutorial. Okay, just find your scripts folder and find the um, script UI panels. Paste the two elements here. As you can see, both will appear here in the script UI panels and you can restart your After Effects um, applications. So let's launch After Effects. Okay, once After Effects is restarted, just go inside the window menu and find the E3D MoGrafter FX GSX bin. Click on it. It will open up a new Element 3D MoGrafter FX panel. It's a resizable window that we, you can um, place wherever you want inside your After Effects layout. Just click and drag the grip um, part of the panel here and place it wherever you want. I will make it I will place it here under the character tab, just right here. And we are ready to go. Before starting to use the toolset, please keep in mind that um, it is entirely based on Element 3D plugin from Video Copilot. So before testing out this um, toolset, please verify that um, your current uh, version of Element 3D plugin is working and in, is installed uh, correctly onto your computer. So let's get starting. As you can see, the UI panel is pretty simple yet effective. It has only four buttons and one option. The fourth button is just giving you um, a bunch of technical information, so I won't talk about this uh, too much. As the main purpose of the toolset is to uh, mimic what happens in Cinema 4D's MoGraph module, you'll find um, an equivalent um, of three of the most useful uh, Cinema 4D's generators. Here, the first button is for creating um, what is called um, a cloner inside uh, Cinema 4D. The second button is for the fracture object and the third one is for what is called mold text in Cinema 4D. Let's create a cloner scene just clicking that button. Instantly, you will have a, a new comp called cloner scene comp that contains three new layers. The first layer is just a camera which has been created because you had this option um, checked, create a new 3D camera. You can uncheck this if you do not want a camera to be created. You have then a second layer called E3D cloner. It's green, just like in Cinema 4D and a third one which is called E3D Effector which is in a bluish purple color just like in Cinema 4D2. If you click on the E3D Cloner 
you will have access in the effects panel to a new pseudo effect E3D cloner, which does contain uh, a lot of options you can tweak to play with. For instance, clicking on that button will create you this pre-built scene, which is based on a grid area mode. And you can choose among two other modes. You have a 3D object mode, which is basically um, cloning your object onto another 3D object's uh, surface. You have a radial mode. A radial mode is um, basically a ring um, onto which your clones will be generated. And the grid area, which uh, looks like that or can be um, a much more complicated. Depending on the option you choose here for the mode, you have to um, search for the corresponding options in the right submenu. Here I have, for example, the grid area chosen. So I will go to the grid area sub effect here. I will deploy it and begin to play with its options. As you can see, I can increase or decrease the number of clones on the X axis. I can, for example, choose to um, add 12 cubes on the X axis. And I can play with the size of the general shape onto this uh, X axis too. I can choose to add more cubes onto other axis. For instance, I can type four cubes onto the Y axis or Z to have a more 3D volume uh, feeling. Okay, and each uh, axis owns its own uh, size parameter, just like in Cinema 4D. Speaking of Cinema 4D, I have grabbed uh, a few uh, screen capture to compare uh, what happens in Cinema 4D's MoGraph module and in my toolset. If you take a look closely to the attribute manager inside uh, Cinema 4D, which is this window here for a cloner object. And if you compare to the uh, E3D MoGrafter FX E3D cloner pseudo effect, you'll find almost the same structure, the same hierarchy and the same um, names for the parameters. For instance, here I am in the, in the cloner inside Cinema 4D and here I am in my cloner from my uh, toolset. Just take a look at this tab. It's named object in Cinema 4D. Well, in my toolset, you'll find object as a subgroup inside the effect. When you deploy the uh, subgroup, you'll find um, the same options. For instance, in my object tab, I have deployed in Cinema 4D, my mod option, where in Cinema 4D you can choose from object, linear, radial, and grid area. In my toolset, you'll have the same option, mode, here, as a drop down list where you can find um, 3D object, radial, and grid area. Um, the linear option is not available as a mode inside my toolset, just because of uh, Element 3D plugins limitations. So this is why you haven't got uh, any linear mode here. So depending of uh, which mode you have chosen, you'll find the corresponding options inside the corresponding subgroup, just like in Cinema 4D. Let's see what happens when you choose a 3D object you choose the 3D object mode and you'll find the corresponding options here in the subgroup 3D object. Same thing for the radial. If you choose radial mode, you'll find the options in the subgroup named radial. And if you compare the um, in between the two softwares, you can see that um, I have almost the same uh, hierarchy and the same 
named uh, parameters from one to the other. For instance, in the radio, I can compare the count here and the count here, the radius and the radius, the plane, which is a drop-down drop uh, list uh, giving me the options to, to place the ring uh, onto uh, another orientation, you have the same in the CIMA 4D. And you can even align or not the clones with this checkbox, exactly the same than in Cinema 4D. Okay, same thing for the grid area. This is the exact same thing here. If I choose in Cinema 4D the transform tab, I'll find a, a lot of options to transform all of my clones at the same time. And you have exactly the same um, in uh, my toolset. Meaning if you uh, deploy the transform subgroup, you'll find exactly the same hierarchy. For instance, I have here the um, X position, Y position, Z position. You'll find it in the position subgroup. Same thing for the scale. I have the same here. Same for the rotation. Same for the color. Same for the time offset, which is uh, giving you the ability to uh, um, offset the animation of uh, an animated um, object sequence. So as you can see, um, everything is pretty much the same from one software to the other. So if you uh, do already know how the MoGraph module works inside Cinema 4D, you'll really be able to, to, to dive into your creation and your animation process really faster than, uh, than ever. You do not have to uh, relearn uh, everything from scratch. It's just a matter of seconds if you do already know MoGraph from Cinema 4D. For other people who do not know MoGraph, uh, yet you um, can play with all the parameters to see what it does and you can learn from the user guide. So if you have um, more technical um, questions, please refer to the user guide first. Let's get back to After Effects. Here I have my scene created with the Element 3D Cloner Scene button. I am now in Grid Area mode that I have tweaked uh, with the grid area options. And I can change from uh, one of those uh, modes, radial for instance, and the radial mode give me a ring shape that I can tweak in the corresponding sub menu here, radial, changing the orientation plane, giving another radius value and increase or decrease the number of clones. Okay, since I am in the 3D space, I can use my camera, my camera tool here, and turn around my scene. I can continue tweaking the options, but I want to, to show you another way to, to be much faster creating your scene. Here you can tweak from the menu, but if you create a new composition. Okay, I will make another comp from scratch. I am now in composition one. If you maintain the Alt key on your keyboard while clicking on the button, look at what happens. Well, now I have created directly a cloner scene, which is on a radial mode, as you can see. Now let's undo this. If I now um, press the shift key while clicking, look at what happens. I have now created another scene, which is based on, um, of course, the grid area mode that is set now on three cubes on each axis. Okay, let's undo this 
last time. And now let's press Alt and Shift key on your keyboard while clicking on the button. And this is what you get. You have now created um, a bunch of clones um, generated onto the surface of another 3D model. Here it's just basically by default a sphere primitive object. Let me show you how to change this uh, uh, default object. To change it, just go inside the E3D cloner layer, find the element 3D uh, effect, but please be really, really careful while playing, playing with the E3D uh, pseudo effect. Do not ever, ever change the stack order of the effect. If you do so, you will completely break all the expressions. If I do EE on my keyboard, as you can see, I have dozens of expressions that make the toolset uh, working. So if you do not want to have uh, dozens of errors, uh, do not ever change the order of uh, effects, or it will completely break your scene and even could be make uh, your After Effects crash. So I wanted to show you how to change the default uh, shape here. I am in 3D object and I will go to the element plugin effect, which is here. I will deploy it. Okay, I just need the scene setup button, click on it. And as you can see, I have created a bunch of uh, groups that are already set up. I just need for the purpose of this part of the demo to enter in this group, which is called shape 3D object model. The cubes were generated on a spherical shape due to this sphere model. It's just the uh, sphere which is in the primitive of element 3D. You can remove it if you want to. And you can create um, any object you want from the primitives, for instance a torus, or you can um, even import uh, your own object from Cinema 4D, for instance, uh, clicking on this import 3D object option here. For the purpose of the tutorial, I will just click on a torus object and be sure to to be here on this shape 3d object mode group it is selected so i can go here and choose a torus object i have uh, choose uh, a wireframe shading to help seeing uh, if there were there weren't too many uh, faces i will just decrease a bit the sides of the torus and decrease the radius to have a pretty little uh, shape overall. Okay, so now I can click on OK. And as you can see, I have now my cubes cloned onto my torus object, which is really cool. I can then uh, play with what is called um, the E3D effector. This is how MoGraph uh, works inside Cinema 4D, and it's really the magic part of the toolset. And begin to play with its place in 3D space. As you can see, just by dragging the the blue arrow here, which is uh, representing the z-axis of my E3D effector, you can animate directly um, all your clones um, exactly in the same um, way you would have done in Cinema 4D's MoGraph module, which is really, really cool and much, much more efficient than the element um, 3D um, native uh, workflow. Okay, and which is cool is that you have um, a lot of options to play with. Just click on the E3D effector. 
as you can see it comes with a pseudo effect which is called e3d effect or cloner only okay so go into it and as you can see the e3d effector from my toolset is composed of two different effectors inside sima 4d you have um, several effectors and mine here is just a combination of a plain effector and a random effector as you can see each of them have the same subgroups effector and parameters for both of them if i play with the plain effector it will affect all the clones um, at the same time with the same value as you can see if i deploy the plain effector parameters i will go to transform i can choose for instance position i can now play with the value and as you can see it make transform all the clones at the same time here i can play with the position on x y or z or you can play with the scale options which are there you can have a um, non-homothetic um, scale here on the x axis on the y axis on the z axis or you can even make your clones disappear if i type zero on each axis which gives me this result if i now move the effector in 3d space i can make it disappear completely okay which is really nice the default value must be one one do not change the size of the clones okay you can tweak the rotation values for each of the axes if you want to okay which gives you uh, interesting results and you can play with uh, other uh, advanced features like uh, color okay you can even uh, go in other which corresponds to uh, the same uh, uh, named tab in cinema 4d which contains uh, u and v uh, mapping transform time offset for animated uh, sequenced object um, and uh, visibility which uh, gives you the ability to make disappear your uh, your clones just by decreasing this value to zero like this okay let's undo this you can now um, play with the second effector which is contained in the e3d effector which is called random effector as you can see by default in effector the activate random effector isn't enabled you have to click on it to enable it now when i play with the effector it can scatter all the cubes here to make them randomize okay and what um displays um in the 3d space it's due to um, the parameters which are there if i deploy parameters transform as you can see it's the same hierarchy than the plane effector here so if i see all these clones uh, moving like this it's not really moving since uh, it's not animated by default but if i go to transform position inside the random effector it's due to the 10 by 10 by 10 on position x y and z axis okay if i enter zero on each axis it returns to its normal state okay if i do just want the clones to move on its y axis i can increase the value only there okay just like this and now my cubes just move on the y axis okay you can play with the scale too okay if i do so 
as you can see, I randomize the scale of my clones. Just like this. By default, you are on zero. And you, play, you can play with the rotation too. Be careful since um, several of these uh, parameters have a um, fixed only option into brackets here. It means that um, if you are in random fixed mode, you'll find some options that are only available with random fixed choose. If you have chosen random fixed, here I can play with rotation X fixed only. As you can see, it works. But if I try to use the rotation noise animated only here, as you can see, it will just not work because of the random mode you have chosen. Here, if I want to use the rotation noise animated only, as you can see, until now, my clones aren't animated during the time. But I, if I change here the mode and I choose the animated noise pause and what only, look at what happens now if I turn the rotation noise animated only. And now, since it's uh, an animated noise, it is animated during time. Okay? I can play with rotation. I can play with position here. And as you can see, just by um, increasing this value on position X, if you play the animation, your clones will be animated as a noise, which is pretty damn cool too, okay? If you want to uh, move your clones in a much smaller detail, you can go to animated noise options here, which is in the effector tab here. I am in animated noise, so I'll go to animated noise options. And you can change uh, the speed, the scale of the noise and the face. If I want to have a much smaller detail in my uh, um, random transformation, I can decrease the scale of the noise. And as you can see, I have now much smaller details in my noise. If I type 10, for instance, I can now have this kind of effect. If I type 10 by 10 by 10 to have a random uh, position on each axis, I can now have something uh, which is pretty more subtle than um, the default values. Okay, so um, that's pretty much all for the effector, um, plane and effector values for their uh, effector and parameters tabs. The last one is the falloff tab. The falloff tab is really really um, powerful. Let me show you. If I deploy the parameters of um, plane effector, so we change um, the scale. I will make them disappear with uh, zero on each axis scale. Okay. So now, as you can see, my animation is rather directional. It's due to the fact that uh, my effector by default is on a falloff if I deploy this menu, falloff, which is on a falloff type based on linear. The linear in Cima 4D does just that. It's just a directional animation. I can change the way it is animated. For instance, I do not want to be on the uh, blue arrow, the Z axis. If I want to make just the same thing with the red arrow, which is the X axis, I can, th since I am in the linear mode, I can deploy the linear options of the falloff tab. Linear options let you change the or orientation here. For instance, during until now, I am on the Z axis. As you can see, this is a default value. If I change and, ch and choose uh, 
the x axis, I can now play with the red arrow, which represents the, the x axis. And I can even change the y axis. If I do so, I can now make this animation based on the y axis, the green arrow. Okay, which is pretty cool. Okay, and which is really cool too is that you have all the uh, shapes for the fall of time. You have, for instance, the radial. Radial is pretty cool since it's let you um, place your effector where, where, wherever you want inside your scene. For instance, I can make, I can place it um, around here, for instance. Okay, I have placed uh, my effector exactly here. Okay, look at where uh, I have placed my effector. And since it's a radial mode, I can now go to the radial options subgroup, deploy it, deploy it and play with the radial completion. By default, it has a 33 value in percentage. You can increase or decrease this value to animate your wall clothes. Okay? That's how it works in radial mode. The last uh, fall of type that you can use is the sequential option. The sequential option here as a fall of type doesn't let you um, use the, uh, the position of your effect of your effector. If you try try to move your effector when uh, your fall of type is based on sequential, it won't do anything. But if you choose sequential here, and um, if you deploy the sequential options, you can play with sequential completion. And now your clones will animate based on their index. Okay? It's not that um, um, easy to understand what it does with this shape. Let me return to a shape a bit less complex, okay? Let's go to E3D Cloner, change to the radial, okay? I am on a radial here. And now you'll easily understand what it does. So now that I, I have changed um, the cloner, on the radial mode, I can now return to the A3D effector and since I am in sequential, let's try increase this value. Look at this. The sequential option lets you animate by cloner index. And as you can see, the first one disappear the first. The second one begins to animate a bit later. The third a bit later too and so on. So just by animating this sequential completion parameter, you will animate your clones by order, which is pretty cool. Moreover, you have the ability, whatever uh, fall-off type you choose, sequential, radial, linear, you have the ability to, 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 to smooth the transition between the clones. Let me show you. If I play with a sequential completion, let's say um, 50%. You uh, have this falloff uh, parameter you can play with. By default, it's a 50% uh, falloff, but if you decrease this value, you see that the transition between the groups, the white cubes and the green cubes, which, is, uh, which are the cubes affected by your effector, is much harder. If I, if I put zero here, your sequential completion will be really um, hard in terms of animation. Look at this. Okay. But you can do um, exactly the inverse. If I put a value of 100% in the fall off here, and if I play with the sequential completion, 
look at this it's now much much smoother than um, the previous uh, animation the cool thing is that you can um, randomize a bit uh, this perfect order here to add more chaos to your animation if i play with a sequential completion it's just perfect in terms of animation but if you want to have something more natural you can play with the randomness here in the falloff let's see what happens if i increase this value okay let's see now if i play with the th sequential completion you have something a bit more chaotic okay if you do not like uh, the way it appears you can always play with the randomness seed here if i change the number for example one as you can see the randomness is completely changed in order for me to make things even more clear I will create a new comp to show you um, the randomness in action. But as you will see, it, there is a limitation with the tool that I must show you. If you try to create a new cloner in this composition, one composition, it will show you this message. Look at this. I am in the composition one. If I click here, you'll have this message that will appear it's totally normal you can't have uh, more than one element 3d MoGrafter fx setup composed with a uh, e3d cloner or uh, e3d fracture or, or uh, e3d motext and uh, e3d effector in the same composition okay that's a limitation just keep that in mind okay I will click on OK, so I will create a new composition or I can even to go to the project panel, click here anywhere to deselect the actual active composition. And since we are not in a composition, I can create here. And for the sake of the tutorial, I will click on the button with shift key pressed. It will create me a new clone in comp that uh, is like this. It's a grid area um, element 3D setup. And I can now go to the E3D cloner, customize it a bit, going to object, grid area. I will add a bunch of cubes here. I make it a 2D uh, grid and OK. I will then go to the E3D effector. And as you can see, with the shift key maintained during the click on the button, it has set up the effector like this. It's a linear, so I can play with it in 3D space directly which wouldn't be possible if I hadn't clicked with the shift key, since it would have been on sequential. And in sequential, as you have seen just before, you can't play in 3D space to animate the clones. Okay, so keep that in mind. I will return on linear. And now you will see really better what uh, randomness does. Okay, for the moment it's pretty perfect, but if you put a little, a little bit of randomness like this, it's much, much more interesting in terms of animation. Okay, so keep in mind that uh, randomness works with each of these three uh, falloff types, sequential, radial, and linear. Finally, speaking of um, the effector, there is a last thing that I want to show you. Just like the cloner, you have the um, E3D effector that is um, really um, pretty much the same thing uh, than in Cinema 4D. Let me show you. 
Here we are in MoGrafter FX in After Effects in my tool, and here we are in Cinema 4D. As you can see, E3D Effector is made of um, is a combination of two effectors: one plane effector I have showed you um, previously, and a random effector, which both have the same um, subgroups: effector and parameters. If I deploy the plane effector in Cinema 4D, and if I go to the parameter tab, and if you compare to the uh, parameters of the plane effector in my tool, this is really pretty much the same thing. Here we have in the transform, in Cinema 4D transform uh, tab, we can uh, have the same parameters position on X, Y, and Z axis in the parameters transform position. Okay, this is really the same thing. And you have the same thing for um, the scale, the rotation, just like this. And um, you can even go to the um, effector tab in Cinema 4D when you are in the randomize uh, effector. And in mine, it's exactly the same. You are in the random effector, go to the effector subgroup, and you can change the random mode to random fixed or animated noise, just like in Cima 4D, where you have random and noise. If you click on one of those, you'll see the um, parameters in Cima 4D um, appearing here. But if you choose one of these uh, two uh, random modes, you'll see their parameters um, in the corresponding subgroups here. Just like this. If I choose animated noise, you'll see the noise parameters just here. And this is pretty much the same thing for the falloff. You have a falloff tab in Cinema 4D that let you uh, drive the shape of the transition between your clones. This is the same thing for me in the MoGrafter FX E3D Effector. In the falloff, you'll find a falloff type which is in infinite mode by default. But if you choose another falloff type, which is exactly the equivalent of the shape here from Cinema 4D, if you choose a linear option, you'll find its options here in linear options like the orientations that I've shown you um, before. Okay, you can uh, choose another falloff type, which is radial. So if you choose radial, just go inside radial option subgroups, where you have the radial completion to drive the animations of your clones. Same thing for the sequential, which has its sequential options with the sequential completion percentage and an index offset which let you um, offset the index of the clones. Just um, note that uh, in Cinema 4D there weren't any um, radial shape nor a sequential follow shape. The radial shape from my uh, toolset is not the same than the sphere follow shape from Cinema 4D. It's not just the same. Okay, um, and uh, same for the sequential. Sequential does not exist, exist directly inside Cinema 4D, but it can do um, pretty much the same thing than the um, step effector that you have in Cinema 4D, if you know it. Okay, if you want to, you can retrieve all these uh, useful informations in the user guide of the toolset. So now that you have seen and understood how the cloner and the effector works together, how do you change the shape of your clones? It's entirely based on the element plugin. So you'll have to go to the cloner. So click on the E3D cloner, go to the element here, and everything must be set in the scene setup. Click on this button. It will open element 3D. 
as you can see by default all that you will create with my tool will be organized like this you have three um, three folders the shape folder we have previously uh, seen is for the 3d object mode only i won't talk about this anymore so uh, look at how it's set up if you look carefully to the folders you'll see that the two folders here are exactly the same the first one is a folder that is named clones one okay and that contains a box model which is this one and which has a um, material which is white and which is called group one this entire group is set up on the first group of element 3d just under this one you'll find a second folder which is exactly the same and which is named clones one copy this one contains the exact same box model inside it and this one is set up with uh, uh, group 2 material which is green and which helps visualizing the effect of your effector okay but you can if you want to put another material for instance the same material from the group one here okay you can do this kind of things but for the purpose of the tutorial I will let the green on the second group and the most import important thing is that um, this entire clones one copy that contains the exact same object that in group one this one is set up on the group two of element 3d it's really really important okay and um, if you do not want some cubes you can of course um, remove those cubes so i will remove the first box model i will um, keep being in the clones one uh, folder and i can do something like this for instance i will take a tube okay i will let all the default options this is a primitive from element 3d and i will remove this one box model okay with the little uh, cross here and in this one i will click again on the tube to create the exact same thing just note that i could have um, copied the the first one to be sure that the object is really the same from this first group to the second one okay last thing uh, i will uh, paste the second material here the greenish okay i have now a white tube in the clones one and a green tube in the clones one copy which is in, in the group two okay last but not least it's really important don't ever forget to set up your custom object on auxiliary animation i will show you how to do this it's really important if you do not um, do this it will not work properly so my tube model here i go on it um, right click on it right click go to auxiliary animation and choose channel one okay and do the exact same thing for the tube model from the second group so here i'll select it i right click on it auxiliary animation and i set it on channel one two okay i've set up on auxiliary animation as well for the two okay whichever shape you want to um to clone with the uh, cloner don't ever forget to place your um, object uh, as a, a, a copy inside both groups 
and don't forget to set them all on uh, auxiliary animation channel one for both of them okay and note that you uh, aren't uh, bound to use primitives you could uh, if you want to import your own 3d object from uh, various um, uh, 3d softwares like cinema 4d 3ds max or uh, anything else okay so uh, that's all for the for the customization of the shape i will click now ok and as you can see now my uh, cloner has duplicated my tube and i can always play with my effector to animate all my clones together okay i can then go to the effector play with the plane effector change uh, some of the values here for example pretty nice and um, you can do whatever you like okay that's pretty much uh, all for uh, the cloner okay now that you have seen and understood how the cloner and the effector work let's have a look at the two other generators uh, that are coming with my uh, toolset. Okay, I will create a new composition, just deselect all and click on this second button. It's for the fracture object. The fracture object is just a way to explode and dissolve uh, multi parts objects modeled in. Um, uh, other 3D softwares. For example, I have here a pre-fractured sphere that comes directly with the element 3D. And as you can see, just by moving the effector um, layer, huh? he is uh, selected, just by moving it in 3D space, I can then animate the whole uh, pre-fractures um, chunks of the ball. Okay, which is pretty cool. Just like for the cloner, if you want to change um, your object and, and you don't, if you don't want a pre-fracture uh, ball, you just have to go in the E3D fracture layer, just like for the cloner, and go directly inside element. As you can see, the fracture is even easier than um, the cloner since it doesn't have any pseudo effect. Just go inside the scene setup and inside the element plugin, you'll find just like for the cloner, two folders that are exactly uh, pretty much the same. The first one is named fracture object and the second one is called fracture object copy. If you go inside both of them, you'll find the exact same object. The, the, the only difference is the material uh, on it. Okay, here I have a ball fracture and here I have a ball fracture with the same size and the same options. I will just remove them. Um, and as you can see, each of these uh, objects were based on uh, auxiliary animation channel one just like in element 3d cloner okay just remove it i have now um, the two folders one is on the group one and the th second group is on the group two okay in the first one i will take for example um, floor fracture which is uh, another primitive uh, that comes with uh, element 3d starter pack i will set it on auxiliary animation channel one right clicking on it okay i will duplicate it i will duplicate the model paste it in the second group and i will just change the um, material for the first one and the material the, the green material for the second one okay just like this 
as you can see, if I take the wireframe, you can see that it is a prefractured object with multi-parts um, chunks. Okay. I can then click on OK. And as you can see, the object has been changed. I can just take my effector and play with its um, position in 3D space. Okay. I can um, tweak the fall off options and choose another um, orient orientation in going in linear options here. The orientation for the moment is on the Y axis, but I can take, for instance, the Z axis. And now, if I go here, I will turn around my object just by moving it along its blue arrow you will find a new animation going in this uh, side. And you will return to the uh, basic scene, which is this one. And you can tweak uh, a bunch of parameters directly in the effector. You can click on it, change the um, orientation, okay, the plane. Um, and you can uh, choose to um, animate uh, the, the clone's properties, like uh, the position. If I deploy the plane effect or parameters, transform, position, or scale, I can scale them um, and make them disappear, make the chunks disappear, um, entering zero inside the scale multi. Okay? And like this, if I do so, all my chunks are disappearing, which is pretty nice too. Okay, I can make it zero, making it one to reset the default values. And you can randomize them. For instance, if I play with the Y, you can go to the random effector. And this is because with the fracture object, the random effector is activated by default that you see all your chunks are um, animating this way as an exploding uh, animation. Okay. If I um, disabled the plane effector like this, I can now just go inside the random effector and see how I can animate this. I can do um, some fixed random um, effects like this. Okay. And just by um, using uh, other values for the strength, you see here, the random effector intensity, you can animate the wall uh, effect just like this. Or you can deploy the um, parameters going here in transform position and increase the values for each axis or even uh, scale the multiple parts here randomize them okay you can um, even have um, a not automated animated noise if you choose this one if you take an animated noise position only you will see um, some options here, animated noise options. And if you try to, an, to, to, to preview this, you'll see all the chunks will be animated. Okay. You can reduce its uh, intensity here. You can have a speed. Um, you can play with a noise speed to make it faster or lower okay slower here you can play with the scale of the overall noise um, um, texture okay to have something like this and you can create like this some pretty cool effects okay um, you can even um, do not want to randomize your, your chunks 
and just have this kind of effects, which is pretty nice if you want to have a, a colorizing um, effects like this. Okay, if you disable um, the plane effector and the random effector, you just animate the material of all your chunks, all of your chunks. Okay, and this is uh, depending of the fracture scene setup here. If you want to have, uh, let's say, uh, some bluish chunks, just change the bright light uh, material here, like you will do uh, usually in Element 3D. For example, I can use the diffuse color, make it a bluish color, and click OK. And now I have changed the overall color of the chunks. Okay? You can create with this fracture object various types of animation. Exploding effects, dissolving effects, logo construction, machinery assembly, etc. Last but not least, the mold text tool. It will allow you, just like in Cinema 4D, to create various um, title scenes, text effects and logo animation just with a click of one button and in a matter of seconds. Let me show you. In order to create a new scene, since I can't create um, more than one a 3D effector in the same comp, I need to ensure that I have, uh, I have no uh, composition selected. So I will click here in my project panel and click on this button. As you can see, it instantly um, creates a text setup. If you go to the effector, which is uh, already selected, you can see that it's invisible. It's just because, as you can see, um, the tool has set up my effector with a falloff based on sequential. As I said before, the effector with this sequential mode can't play with the clones animation, with the text animation, just by moving it in the 3D space. To animate the characters, you need to go, since it's in sequential, to the sequential options subgroup. Just deploy it and play with the sequential completion. And just like this, see how fast it is to animate your titles. Okay, it's just a matter of seconds. I have already set up the scene to be used for titles, so um, there is a randomness on the 3D rotation of each character. And you can um, play with various uh, properties, like um, if you enter in the plane effector, you can, for example, uh, go in the parameters, transform, position, um, and play with other values like uh, the X position. Here um, I have all the characters coming from the camera since I have set the position on the Z axis on a negative value. Okay, I can make the exact inverse, making um, the character come from the far away okay I can uh, play with the scale options with the rotation of all of my characters okay this is pretty simple to understand and to play with once you have understood the uh, cloner principle you can um, play with the random effector too just go inside the random effector, parameters, transform, and play with the position. Okay, something like this. Or you can play with the multi um, scale, or even the rotation already set up um, to uh, value. Okay. Now, how do I customize the characters, the text itself? 
Well, you have a layer that is named your text here. I will just uh, make it visible. I will double click and edit the text box. For example, I can type this and as you can see, the scene instantly uh, set up correctly and you can then play with the parameters I've shown you uh, previously. Okay, it's a fully 3D scene. So with uh, your camera, you can turn around your scene. Okay, and make something like this. Okay. If you want to um, customize the look of the, um, the beaver, you have to deal with um, the native Element 3D plugin. So you'll have to go here in the E3D Moltex layer, go inside the scene setup, and this is where you'll have to customize the extrusion models. Okay? You um, can see that it's exactly the same for the fracture object and the um, cloner object. You have two folders, one set on group one and the second set on group two. Okay, you can see too that um, my extrusion model, which uh, basically is my extruded text, is set on um, uh, the default uh, typography and you can play with the bevel options just like you will do normally uh, inside element 3d you can go to the extrusion model go to this tab and play with uh, the um, extrusion uh, values okay you can even add presets if you go to bevels Okay, and if you try to add uh, something like this, for instance, okay, I can go in the second one and add the same bevel. And now, if I click on OK, my uh, new animation has completely changed. The animation is the same, but the look and the style is completely different. So. I will zoom in a little bit and play with the sequential completion option. Okay, pretty cool. I will undo this uh, a few times. Okay. And um, what if you want to have a multi-line paragraph? Well, just go in your text layer and type whatever you want something like this okay and as you can see it's really the same thing i can now play with my effector and have the characters animation um, based on the index of each character, which is really pretty nice. Since um, this single uh, parameter, let me animate the entire uh, paragraph. Pretty cool. If you don't want to have this um, uh, by index order uh, animating animation, you can always choose another file of type. For example, I can play with the linear option and have this kind of animation. You see, with the linear option, I have um, all my lines affected by the effector at the same time, which could be cool if you want to. Okay? If you want the exact inverse of this animation, you have an invert um, checkbox that you can check is here uncheck okay and if I do so I can now 
sorry for that. I can now play with my effector and now this is an, anime, an animating in uh, animation. Pretty nice. Okay, that's pretty all for the mod text. Um, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Okay, we have almost finished the overview. Let me show you a last reminder. First, do not ever change the stack order of the effects inside Element 3D Cloner's layer. Do not rename or delete uh, the layers or their effects created by the toolset. It's really, really important. The only thing that you can remove or delete is the E3D camera which is created with this option. Okay? Do not ever forget to set your custom object for the clones and the fracture model's shapes on the channel 1. This is um, located in the auxiliary animation when you right click on your object inside Element 3D Scene Setup. Keep in mind that you can't add more than one E3D Mografter FX scene in the same comp. As I have shown you uh, previously, if I go there, there is already an E3D effector. If I try to, to do another um, mod text or another fracture or another cloner here, it just won't work. Okay, you have to create another composition or to deselect your comp in the project panel to make it work. Let's continue. Okay, this is the last thing. Just keep in mind that all that is concerning the visual aspect of your 3D scenes, whatever it is, materials, bevels, lighting, render, um, ambient occlusion, uh, physical environment, um, glossiness, etc. must have to be um, set up directly in the element plugin. The toolset won't allow you to do this, okay? It's just um, a toolset that will um, speed up your uh, element 3D uh, usual workflow. But for the aspect of your objects, keep in mind that it is in element 3D, okay? So I've um, finished. If you have some questions, if you have um, some problems, don't hesitate to contact uh, us at um, aescripts.com or to contact us um, through our motioncafe.com website. Um, and if you want to dive um, in the toolset more in detail, you can always um, check the user guide, which is a pretty, pretty um, nice um, support for the toolset, which is um, rather deep uh, as a tool. So um, don't hesitate to take a look at uh, the user guide. And I hope that um, the toolset will um, dramatically uh, speed up your element 3D workflow and that you love it. Okay, see you later.